Dedicated to the grind and dedicated to you. That's why we do what we do. This is Power Grind Boxing. Deontay Wilder drops a bombshell. Talks about Spence being over dehydrated in a historic fight against Terrence Crawford where he reigned supreme. Yeah, you heard that right. This is Power Grind Boxing and this is the wide world of boxing now like i said it was a monumental showdown it went down and it witnessed greatness by the boxing world do you understand terence crawford emerged victorious over Errol spence jr and secured a undisputed welterweight champion status with a great and awesome spectacular ninth round stoppage of Errol Spence Jr. Now, Deontay Wilder has raised some eyebrows with his observations, and he suggested that Errol Spence Jr. may have struggled to make 147 pounds, which was the weight that he fought Terrence Crawford at. You know, he just, it was a draining performance in this crazy matchup. You got what I'm saying? Now, Wilder, he added another layer that of I'm gonna call intrigue to an already intense bout between these two elite athletes. You got what I'm saying now? Terrence Crawford, man, shouts out to him for emerging and having emerging in a victorious manner and having a impressive victory over Aerosmith Jr. Now, of course, it's a lot of controversy, just like with Deontay Wilder's statement about Spence appearing over dehydrated and drained during the fight. And it's a lot of attention, especially on social media, man. They talking about all the challenges that Errol Spence Jr. faced in making 147 pounds. Now, despite that defeat, Errol Spence Jr. made no excuses, head high like a nosebleed. You got what I'm saying? And he had graciously acknowledged that Crawford had the skill and he looked forward to a possible rematch at 154 pounds, right? Now, listen up. I'm gonna give you my thoughts on Errol Spence Jr. You didn't ask for them, but I gotta give it to you. Listen, I'm gonna tell you like I tell everybody in social media. You know, I've been on Facebook, on Instagram, all it. Listen, man, boxing, it's a crucial sport. It's a brutal sport. It's a lonely man's sport. And it's a sport where people are bandwagon fans. They don't really support you. You understand me? The bottom line is this. We know that Errol Spence Jr. It took a lot to make 147. We knew that. We knew that he went through a lot of crazy, unimaginable pain to get to 147 and in his life surviving three car crashes and going through all kind of crazy stuff, right? Now, when you bring this stuff up, people would be like, yo, no, that's an excuse. That's an excuse. Listen, speaking reality is not providing an excuse. Now, if you say, hey, the reason why he didn't perform is because then that's providing an excuse. But if you talk about what happened in real life to Errol Spence Jr., that's not providing an excuse for him losing to Terrence Bud Crawford. You got what I'm saying? Now, Crawford was number one on my pound for pound list. Check that video out, you know what I'm saying? Like months ago. But anyway, the bottom line is this, man. People don't care. They don't give a fuck if these guys live or die. If Errol Spence Jr. had passed away in the car crash, people would have just been like RIP and they would have moved on. If Terrence Crawford leaves this earth right now, people will just say RIP and the world will move on. These fighters, they have to do right now what makes sense for them and their family. They have to, because the world don't care. That, that's the brutal, honest truth about this boxing game and about these fake fans. The world don't care. The world don't care that Errol Spence had went through a lot of pain, went through a lot of difficulty to make 147, to make this fight happen, to all the sacrifices that Errol Spence Jr. took to make this happen. No one cares about that. Terrence Crawford, he took a lot of criticism. He made a lot of sacrifices. He went up and weight and lost weight. He made a lot of sacrifices just to fight at 147 against Errol Spence Jr. Nobody cares about that. 
If these guys die right now, nobody cares. The world keeps going on. So I wish them well. I wish them more money. I hope they have all the success in the world because it really kills me that people right now on social media are saying there were some of the most horrible things on the planet. They just showing you how they do not care and do not value the life of these boxers. And I'm telling you, when I tell you it really gets on my nerves, you don't even understand. I get angry and emotional about it because it's ridiculous. One time in history, in this four belt era, where a guy named Errol Spence Jr. went through all kind of craziness, accidents and surgeries, etc. They tried to get him to fight Thurman. They tried to get him to fight Pacquiao. They tried to get him to fight everybody. He said, no, I don't want no tune-ups. I want to fight this guy. And he made history by making one of the biggest fights ever in the welterweight history in this four belt era. How are you going to disrespect him? How are you going to disrespect the man who did that? Okay, he came up short against um, Terrence Bud Crawford. Terrence Bud Crawford has shown that he's elite. Errol Spence Jr. has shown that he was elite by taking a belt from every single champion. He went over to Sheffield, England, took the belt, took that belt from Sean Porter, out dog the dog, and everybody know, you know, Hater Porter was, you know, not feeling Spence, but they, we knew that he was a dog. Errol Spence Jr. chose to fight Sean Porter at his fight. And he outdogged the dog in Sean Porter. Then he broke Ugar's face, took that belt. So everybody with all this criticism, oh, Errol's this and he slept with him. He's the either. Why don't you post a video of what you do? Everybody's a critic, but nobody ain't taking these belts. Errol Spence Jr., the only one that keep that has taken a belt from each champion in this four belt era. So why wouldn't Errol Spence think that he could run through Crawford? Gamboa, he hurt Crawford, right? Gamboa's small. He hit Crawford, hurt Crawford. Eventually, Crawford disassembled him, right? So why would Errol Spence Jr., somebody who's bigger, stronger, faster, et cetera, than Gamboa, why wouldn't he think that he could hurt Crawford? Why wouldn't he think that? He should think that. I keep, I'm on social media, people using all these kind of crazy things. They saying that Gamboa would hurt Spence if they thought he could beat. I'm like, what? So you saying Gamboa could be, it's just ridiculous. The amount of disrespect, it makes no sense. These guys gave us what we wanted as boxing fans. They gave us what we asked for. I don't want to hear, oh, it was two years too late. Oh, it was three years too late. Who cares, dude? It happened. They made the fight happen in a time where people don't make fights happen. And now, Errol Smith Jr. got to hear all of this crazy stuff. People were saying they wish he died. They saying they all kind of just the most craziest stuff on the planet that you could say. The most disrespectful stuff. It just makes no sense to me. It makes no sense. It's not logical. It's not respectable. But let me pull down off of this emotion that I got. I'm on an emotional high right now because people are crazy. You cra These fake fans, they crazy talking crazy about Spence. They crazy talking craziness about Crawford. Yo, these two individuals, they held no excuses. They showed the boxing world how to start the promotion of a fight. How to end the promotion of a fight how to make a fight happen. And then at the post fight press conference, they show each other respect. They show, they were the living example of how you're supposed to do things. Like what, what more do you want? They did everything that you're supposed to do as a welterweight and as a champion. They have given their blood, their sweat and tears, both of them to this sport of boxing. We owe them the respect because they earned it through their blood, sweat, and tears, and people don't care. <sighs> Just, anyway, let me go ahead and, <sighs> it makes me really angry, man. Listen, man, in a sport of, in this, in this world of sports, right? Especially in a high stakes competition like boxing, 
you you got to understand that it's essential to learn from every experience whether that's a victory or whether it's a defeat Terrence Crawford learned from this victory Errol Spence Jr. learned from this defeat and Errol Spence Jr.'s determination to face Terrence Bud Crawford despite the struggles that he faced from accidents to surgeries to making weight I think it's massively commendable it takes a lot of courage and a lot of willpower to step inside of that ring against an opponent like Terrence Bud Crawford under the circumstances that Errol Spence Jr. stepped into that ring. Now, like Deontay Wilder with his observations, I think that I think it's logical. Now, it serves to me as a reminder that the road to success is not always smooth. Guess what? Life is going to throw some unexpected challenges in your direction. And sometimes uh, you might feel drained and overburdened in life. But it's crucial to remember that challenges are a part of your growth. It's a part of the process and it's just a part of life. So they tested their strength. They tested their resilience and their determination to make this fight happen. And in the face of defeat, guess what? Who stood like a champion? Errol Spence displayed true sportsmanship. He acknowledged Crawford's skill and he gave him credit when it was due the most part and didn't make no type of excuse. He had humility. He showed grace even in the aftermath of a tough loss. And we saw that he was so disappointed, but it's okay because he's strong and he got resilience. And that's an admirable quality that he had. And it's a quality that every single athlete should aspire to possess inside of themselves, inside of their mind. No excuses. That's what he showed the boxing world. Man, I'm telling you, look, life is a continuous journey. It's just like boxing. You're on a journey and you're learning and you're trying to improve. And I'm telling you, mad shouts out to Terrence Bud Crawford, mad shouts out to Errol Spence Jr. And you know, I know Spence and Crawford, they're looking forward to a possible rematch at a different weight class, 154, that's what I'm hearing. They gotta eat, adapt, they gotta evolve, and they're gonna, it's gonna be filled with different challenges, even if they fight at 154. But I'm telling you, man, if you accept your defeat, how Errol Spence Jr. did, with grace and trying to learn from it, guess what, you're gonna become a better version of who you are you got what i'm saying so you got to look at errol spence jr and terrence bud crawford and look at their sportsmanship look at their willingness to face adversity head on and you should let that inspire you to embrace you know different challenges that you have in life you got what i'm saying because success is not about the victory like i've said before it's about the times that you learn it's about the lessons that you learn in this journey of life so mad shouts out to Deontay Wilder, Errol Spence Jr., Terrence Bud Crawford. I think those are the individuals that I named in this video. Let me know in the comment section. Look, we need to really appreciate boxing more and have respect for these individuals who put their life on the line. People die. You don't play boxing. Man, this is Power Ground Boxing, courtesy of Power Ground Sports. Punch the like button. Tell a friend to tell a friend about this channel right here. We trying to grow, man. Stay on the ground. We out.